Time to hoop it up in downtown Chicago as the 10th right Marquette Golden Eagles come to town 84 miles to the south. Door to door from Fiserv Firm to win Trust Arena. The Paul Blue Demons here at home tonight. Winners of two in a row. Up to date standings within the Big East Conference. Big win for Marquette over the weekend to take down Villanova. It was the Wildcats' first loss of the season in conference play. And then you look at the middle there, a five way tie for third place. St. John's, Georgetown, Seton Hall, DePaul, and Butler all in the mix. We we'll welcome you courtside, everybody, along with Dickie Simpkins, Jeff Levering with you. Hey, listen, Marquette, they've been playing great basketball, but DePaul has won two in a row. And if the Big East Conference Tournament started today, DePaul will be the number three seed. Well, DePaul has put themselves in a good position. They're trending up in the Big East. All it takes is one win like today, a big win, one or two together, and now you break away from that middle of the pack. That's what they'll try to do today against a very talented Marquette team. DePaul is a very feared team. We take a look at our starting lineups here, presented by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Howard, Annam, Hauser, Hauser, and John. Sam, Joey, and Theo John, they're going to have to have big nights tonight against that huge front line of DePaul that has Jalen Butts back in the starting lineup and Femi Alugebi coming off the bench. And for you, Dickie, two key players players in this game, Marcus Howard and Paul Reed. Well, Marcus Howard is a dynamic and explosive score. Averaging 25 points a game, does it in a variety of ways. Threes, off the bounce, floaters, and then Paul Reed has impressed as of lately. His last name, nine games, 16-point average, and he has become one of my rise and shine players of the Big East. He's ready to tip it off against Theo John, a couple of Outstanding sophomores in the conference. Jalen Butts gets the loose ball, and the Blue Demons are on offense. Winners of two in a row, including this last weekend against Xavier down in Cincinnati. Look down low for Paul Reed. Inside Butts had it stripped away by Hauser into the hands of Theo John. Butts wasn't able to handle the ball right there. Expect the ball to attack the paint using Butts and using Reed, trying to get some paint points early. Marquette. The one-point win against Villanova over the weekend. As Sam Hauser for three in the corner and a huge shot to get him going. I see it every time I do a Marquette game, Jeff. Sam Hauser has one of the prettiest jump shots in college basketball, if not the best. And right there, coming off the screen, wide open, locked in, loaded, and knocking it down. Had just four points in the game against Villanova over the weekend. Already got three, not even a minute in. There's Max Struess with the right hand. He's fouled, and he will go to the line and shoot a couple. Sam Hauser, so important to get him going early in this one, Dickie. Well, Marquette does a good job moving without the ball. They know that Sam Hauser has to get going, like you mentioned, and they find him early. The game plan, get the ball to him early, get him good, open look. And right there, he knocked it down. Max Struess has had a tough go of it of late, averaging 13 points over his last five. And you think, man, 13 points is pretty good, but not Struess-like. Yeah, Struess started off the season very aggressive, shooting the ball well. He's only shooting the low 30s from behind the arc. And starting this game, he attacked the basket, which I think he should do, be aggressive, get to the free throw line, and then expand your game out from there. He's shooting just 29% over his last five games since the last matchup against Marquette. Marcus Howard getting around Struess. Joey Hauser now into the corner again. It's Sam. Missed that shot and Butts with another rebound. Bruce and Marcus Howard on a big time mismatch as Butts ended up on the ground. It's a travel, ran into Theo John. Steve Ojahowski, head man at Marquette for the fifth season. It's the fastest they've got to 20 wins since the 08 09 season. 20 and 4. The Golden Eagles coming into this one tonight against DePaul. Defense has been a marketed upgrade this year. Coach Wojo, being a disciple of Coach K, has come in here and put his thumbprint on this Marquette program and has developed a culture. And when you talk about embracing the process, when you talk about having a plan, Wojciechowski has had a plan, stuck with it, and this team, this program is continuing to progress every year. He shut down Villanova early as Sakar Annam dials one up from three and gets the roll. Sakar Annam, not really known as a three-point shooter, but has been shooting the three well in Big East play, shooting 47%. Paul Reed hits his first jumper, Annam. 
He and Howard combined for 56 of the 66 against Villanova the weekend. And for Paul Reed to knock that first shot through, also very important. A lot of his game comes from the inside, not necessarily a great outside threat. Across the court to Joey Hauser. Joey Hauser from the opposite end. Jeff, I don't know if you recognize this, but Sam Hauser's three-point shot he made earlier came from his brother Joey. Joey's three-point shot just now came from his brother Sam. No coincidence that they know how to play off of each other, playing in the backyard all the time. Out of bounds and a foul before anything else. Dave Lado, he is in his second stint as a head man in downtown Chicago at DePaul. He has his Blue Demons playing as well as the program has in 10 years. Well, he was here before he had a stint. He came in here and got this DePaul program rolling. That's why they brought him back. And he is slowly but surely bringing in the talent. They're playing well. And you see, just like he said in the opening, if the Big East tournament started today, they would be a third seed. Veteran Lado has done an excellent job. A rare miss for Marcus Howard from the free throw line. This DePaul team in this program right now is a feared team in the conference. I don't think there's anybody that wants to play them right now. But their size on the front line is massive with Alugibi, Butts, Struz. It's really impressive. Nobody wants to go in down low. Paul Reed is having such a great season as well. It's kind of a throwback to your old Big East days. Yeah, it absolutely is. Brings back some big guys getting touches in the paint. But one of the things that you have to recognize as you see Paul Reed try to get in there and finish. Two straight blocks from Mount Theo. Hashtag security. Theo John, the best shot blocker in the conference. And Marcus Howard delivers on the other end. Timeout to Paul. Eli Kane has to know you're playing against Marcus Howard. You can't give him that kind of room. Your hand is down. He's taking that, and he's knocking it down. Daytona Thursday at 7 Eastern on FS1. And don't miss the Daytona 500. Coverage begins Sunday at 1 on Fox. The Marquette Golden Eagles up by nine points, and this is why. An approved defensive team. Theo John, multiple block shots, protecting the rim, and then defense, creating offense, getting it to your explosive score, Marcus Howard with a knockdown three. Marquette, it's been their recipe. Defense leading to offense. And when you've got the league's leading scorer in Marcus Howard, not hard to see why they're 10th ranked in the country. Paul Reed falling down, knocks down the shot, a chance for a three-point play. Jeff, understand this. Paul Reed is the most energized, most improved player through the Big East play this season and coming from last season. His confidence is high. He's expanded his game to the perimeter. Look at the exaggerated follow-through. He's getting fouled and he's just playing off energy, instinct, and making himself available with his length. He seems to be in the right place at the right time. Whether on the offensive end, on the defensive end, he's a great shot blocker with all that length and athletic ability. Converts on the three-point play. Joey Hauser has to go to the bench with a couple of fouls. Sakarian and gets to Sam Hauser. Now Marcus Howard wide open from the corner. For the people watching this game, one thing they have to understand, the Golden Eagles are one of the most explosive offensive teams in college basketball. The reason why, as you see the steal by Ed Morrow, the reason why is because their ability to pass the ball with precision. All their shots from three. Here's another, and it didn't go down for Marcus Howard. They don't waste time. When they see an open teammate, they swing the ball. They make the one more pass. Devin Gage gives to Elujabi, and Elujabi knocks down the tray. Elujabi definitely has that in his game. He will shoot the occasional three, keep you honest. He has the post-up game, but if he's open, he's taking the three and has the ability to knock it down. Coming off the bench, double figures and ten straight. Too strong from Howard, two straight misses from Marcus. 
DePaul trying to run with the Golden Eagles right now. Not necessarily their strength. Another look for Lujubi from three, and he's two for his last two. When you have the luxury to have a big like a Lujubi who's effective in the paint with post moves and footwork, but also gives you the opportunity to knock down threes, is unbelievable. And on goes around the corner. Nice screen set by Morrow. He got a couple of Blue Demons on that one. Adam doing what Adam does is an aggressive attacker to the basket. Saw the opening, penetrated. First two-point bucket of the game from Marquette is Paul Reed. Misfires that time, and Howard pulls down the board. Up ahead to Adam. Adam slicing, dicing, and he's got two more. Don't think that Marquette is just a perimeter shooting team. When they have the opportunity, they will get out in transition and score in the fast break. Saw Adam do that a lot over the weekend against Villanova. And again, had 18 points in that game, and a lot of that was done in the paint area on drives. And then they uh, did another game, 17 points in transition. Kane will go to the line when we come back. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. Got a good one in Chicago. Seven-point lead for Marquette on the road here in downtown Chicago. You see in the background there that DePaul huddle. The T-shirts, I know a fighter. They've been wearing those for about the last three weeks since DePaul visited Marquette up in Milwaukee. And that is in support of their team manager, sophomore Amir Sahi. Battles from neurofibromatosis, form of cancer. Started a Twitter handle as well, Sahi Strong. For support of Amir and his family, those shoes that you just saw are being worn by Max Struess today, designed by one of his friends, Brad Durant. Designed them especially for tonight's ball game, and you see the support for their team manager, Amir, as he deals with this awful situation and just the support that he has received from his teammates, from the coaching staff, from the DePaul community has been terrific. And when you're going through a tough situation and you're dealing with having medical issues and you have the doctors trying to get you back in 100 percent one of the things that you have to understand is the support from your friends and your teammates and the guys that you're around all the time can be an added added support part for you to help get through the process you're going through medically and amir continues to text with his teammates and friends as he goes through this battle and Everybody on that bench, they won't forget him. There's no doubt about that. He's with them every step of the way. Brendan Bailey back on the offensive end. A miss from the corner. A lot of corner trays we're seeing so far from Marquette. Six-point lead on the road for the 10th ranked Golden Eagles. Trying to sweep the regular season against DePaul. A 10-point win back in Milwaukee on the 23rd of January. He's a lunch of these three for three. The big fella has it going out on the perimeter. You have to live with it. He's, he made his first two. He's feeling it. So if you coach later, you say, hey, big fella, take that third one. <laughs> uh, Lujabi just picked up his first foul, but Marquette, a flurry of threes. They've been one of the best in the country the last few years. Well, you're talking about a team that shoots in the high 30s, close to 40%, making threes. And because of their passing, it helps you get Good, comfortable, in-rhythm shots, as you see Marcus Howard, Joey Hauser. You look at the precise passing on the perimeter, and that just helps your team may have a high opportunity and chance to make shots. Sam Hauser now a little turnaround over the top of Max Struess. Sam Hauser so versatile. Career high against Georgetown earlier this year without Howard. There's butts inside, had altered by Bailey. One of the things you have to be impressed with in Marquette. In rhythm, Sam Hauser a miss. Is their transition defense up to this point? And Devin Gage and Theo John going nose to nose. Adam and Bailey trying to break those two up. And Devin Gage is giving up about a foot to Theo John. Well, Devin Gage is a, a local Chicago kid out of Curry High School. Devin Gage has a high level of toughness. He's not going to just let a big guy intimidate him. I don't think it was much here. Just a little love tap here, a little, a little standoff. Try, Devin Gage trying to show Theo John like I'm not backing down. Well, this it says a lot as well. 
about DePaul in this in this program and where they are and you know, Theo John trying to block out Devin Gage and the two kind of get into a little bit and well Devin Gage is doing his job as a guard he's he's dropping back on the big in the rotation you're taught to do whatever you have to do as a small to box out the big he did his job Theo John is like throwing, tossing him around on the ground and yep. just getting his position Nothing there, nothing there, Jeff. That's a pretty simple situation. I mean, the, the officials are doing their, their job to go look at the monitor, but they're going to walk away from that, and it's nothing. Yeah, like I said, I think it goes. It says a lot about DePaul because in a few a few years ago, you know, you're looking at a, a situation where maybe DePaul kind of lets that go. Man, we've been having a tough year, and it's been a tough season. Devin Gage standing up for himself, standing up for his program. Well, no, this 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 DePaul team has more talent than in the past. And they have a level of toughness of guys that are going to make a stand, and that's what you need. And that's what's been the progression. We talked about how DePaul is, if the Big East started, they would be third seed and how they're trending up. If Devin Gage doesn't get hurt last season, mm -hmm. I think DePaul is playing at this level last year. Unfortunately, he got hurt. Now he's back, and here we are. He tore his Achilles in December of last year, and officials... Uh, trying to clean this situation up again if it's a flagrant one or just a common foul or just anything at all uh, You're looking at a flagrant one. That's what you got to do for that flagrant two You got the unsportsmanlike conduct and just a common foul, common foul and it will be on Devin Gage Yeah, that was nothing That was nothing Jeff. I mean Devin Gage is doing his job trying to do whatever he can to box him out He took exception to Theo John trying to throw him down on the ground, which I understand Theo John, with all of his size, just a little forearm shiver, it's all you need. Hauser lost it, and Luchy becomes away with a loose ball. First turnover for Marquette. I talk about Marquette's improved defense, but the ball is improved defense, as you see. Max Cruz still being aggressive, going to the basket, and not selling for threes, attacking in transition. First field goal of the game for Max Struess. Just did get it over the top of Theo John. Three-point game here in Chicago. Eric Schreiner on the fourth for the first time for the Blue Demons. Hauser trying to go out of Luchabu with a foul. Hauser over the top. Hauser's got it going. So nice, so smooth. The versatility has the post up, the craftiness right there, just maneuvering, manufacturing a step back fadeaway. Hauser with seven points in the first eight minutes of this game. Then he had just four against Villanova. Lujabi steps back. He is four for four. And it's impressive how he has scored in this game all perimeter jump shots. Three threes and a mid-range off the bounce pull-up. Hasn't scored yet where his bread and butter is in the paint. 11 straight games and double figures already. Lujabi with 11. Little floater for Marcus Howard. Theo John there. Cleans it up. And that's what Theo John brings to this Marquette team. Toughness in the paint, aggressive offensive rebounding, just wedging his way in, getting the ball, securing it, and dumping. Theo John a double-double with six blocks against DePaul. First time out. Almost got that one. Sam Hauser is there for the rebound. Numbers for Marquette. Hauser transition three. Got another. Sam Hauser. Only had four shots last game, and right now he's making up for it. He's feeling it, giving you everything you want to see in his offensive repertoire. Mom and Dad made the trip down from Stevens Point right around Green Bay. Four and a half hour drive to watch Sam and Jordan Day. Struce in and out. A whistle in the paint. Foul on Theo John, but a great pace going to this one, Dickie. The blue collar worker Theo John just wedging his way in, going over top, getting the rebound. And then the monster dunk. OMG. Nice and dance and readiness. Who are they going to? Bruce. Bruce. We'll go through our lineup. You got to stay in the Struce's body. If for whatever reason you get detached to him, you, it's got to be emergency switch. It's pretty simple. The Struce can't get loose, Jeff. Key, one of the major keys of the game, and you see Coach Wojo, you have your blueprint, you have your game plan, but he said, 
You have to do an emergency, sw emergency switch if necessary. We cannot allow him to get open and get comfortable. We talked about it in the open as well. Struz averaging just 13 points over his last five games, and it's because he's such a focal point for every team that DePaul plays. Everybody makes a somebody else beat him. As Jalen bucks on the inside with Hauser and two fouls on Joe. He had to be careful. The final excellent read and react off of defense. He saw Butt slip and hit him straight down the lane for the easy layup. Deep three. Marcus Howard in and out. Bailey into the hands of Lyric Schreiner. Schreiner step up three. And it is raining threes here in Chicago. Well, when you have Schreiner coming in, a guy that only averages a little bit over a point and a half, and he comes in and gives you a positive with hitting an assist to Jalen Butts, and then comes out, pull up three in transition, you already have a plus, plus five from him early in the game. Howard inside, and Howard got the roll that time. To put it in perspective for Lyric Schreiner, that was just the third three-pointer he's made all season in 15 attempts. He doesn't shoot a lot. He's in there to play defense and distribute. Yeah, and he's a guy only averaging shooting at 14% and 22% in conference play, so you're right. Bailey, tough assignment with Struz. And Joey Hauser off of Hauser. It's going to stay with the ball. And here's Schreiner just doing an excellent job being a basketball player, reading and reacting off of the defense. Sees butts slip. And right here, when you're getting a knockdown three in transition by a guy you put in the game just to keep everything simple, you're already winning, getting a plus plays from Schreiner. 14-0 in the bench production in favor of DePaul. And it will be off of Jalen Butts. Nice job by the Chicago native Ed Morrow to get possession for Marquette. 11 from Alujabi off the bench, 3 from Schreiner as Joey Hauser hits the bench and Annan comes in for Bailey. And Joey Hauser with two fouls and a three. And Annan is back in there now. Uh, right here is where you have Chartuni playing the point. You kind of play Marcus Howard off the ball, let him be a score. Try to get him open looks. From Eli Kane on him. Kane has done a nice job on Marcus Howard the last three years. There's Hauser for three. Short. Tapped away by Adam, and he keeps it alive. No, out of bounds as he ends up in the third row behind the basket. Well, that was a good possession by Marquette. Adam, this is what he brings, energy and hustle. You have to put a body on him. You have to locate because if you don't, he's coming in there and scrumming out rebounds. If it weren't for Paul Reed having this outstanding season in the Big East, maybe Sakar Anning is your most improved player this year. What he's been able to do offensively, he takes the best offensive threat on the other team and shuts him down. Eli Kane over to Schreiner. Schreiner for three again. Couldn't hit that time. Tapped out of bounds off of Marcus Howard and... Sakar Adam has picked up right where he left off over the weekend. Has become a confident score shooting in the 40s from three. Wasn't known as a three-pointer before, but this was his game. This is still his game. Attacking the basket in transition and in half-court sets. He's been a big part offensively for this Marquette team. Has made his last seven shots since Saturday. He's three for three. 10 total for Annam. Will goal 10 by Ed Morrow. Simeon High School product. He's in Nebraska for two years now at Marquette. We have a couple of Chicago guys out here. Devin Gage, Curry, Ed Morrow, Simeon. The varsity team at Simeon is a sophomore. Backed up Jabari Parker. Great program, public school system in Chicago. And Morrow's out of bounds. He receives the pass from Ann and back to back turnovers for Marquette. Well, assuming has a program that produced Derrick Rose, Jalil Okafor, Jabari Parker. <laughs> list goes on and on and on. That's just the contemporaries. <laughs> I mean, those are some impressive NBA players right there. Morrow, whose dad played for national champion at Nebraska. 
That would be the football Nebraska national champions. Can you lose to be driving on Theo John and Theo flying it straight up? It's a three-point game. A lot of energy in Chicago. So now they press up on you. We can't even put the ball in the post. All right? You got to sprint up, get to be a player, and then see what happens yep. from there. Yep. All right? And Coach Lato, I love his temperament when he's in timeouts talking to his team, but he's simply explaining to Eli Kane, when you're coming off of there, you have to get down in the triple threat, rip the ball through, clear your defender off you to get space, and then you play from there. You can't come off standing straight up. Now you can't make any kind of play. You can't pass, you can't shoot, you can't drive. A three-point lead for Marquette on the road. DePaul doing more than their fair share of hanging in there. They did the same up in Milwaukee back on the 23rd of January. It ended up being a 10-point win for the Golden Eagles. But DePaul, to say that they are in every game would be an understatement. As Lou Trebi has 14 points right now in just seven minutes off the bench. And you see there on the bench, Joey Hauser on the left, Theo John on the right, both with two fouls. It's the depth on this front line, Dickey, that is so troublesome for these other Big East opponents when you play against DePaul. And when DePaul comes back down court on offense, there shouldn't be any overthinking this. Get the ball to the block, to the paint, put the pressure on Marquette. And try to get around the corner. Now Morrow on Lujibu. Morrow with the right hand. Move that one around two different times. That's your move by Ed Morrow. Ceiling establishing a great post up position. More of an undersized college forward center and effective using his strength of wide shoulders to clear space for the jump hook. First bench points from Marquette. There's Morrow that says no thanks, Paul Reed. Morrow brings some defensive intensity to this team when he comes off the bench. Look at the post up. Look at the patience. Look at the footwork using that butt, the shoulder to clear the space, and to get up the jump hook. Devin Gage back in the game. Marcus Howard's been quiet. Only two points in the last eight minutes for Marcus. Five to shoot. Struce with Adam on him. Two to shoot. Struce got to go. Struce laid it up. Couldn't get it. And a foul. And it's going to stay with DePaul. It was a good thing that Max Struess drove the ball right there. The shot clock is at four seconds left, and instead of settling for a bad three, he drove the ball, put the pressure on Marquez's defense, put him in position to get an offensive rebound, and got the foul. And more trouble, foul trouble-wise, Morrow just picked up his second. But if you're the Blue Demons right now, you have to go to Elizabeth, no doubt. Right into him, there's the double from Morrow. And Sakar and pokes it away before it got to Gage. Chartuni transition three. Chartuni win. No. Morrow offensive rebound. Morrow's good. A man among boys. Strumming out offensive rebound. All strength and desire. Came now driving on Chartuni. No, there's a follow by Pauline. Guys got hops out of a phone booth. Hashtag special delivery. <laughs> That's the limp, the high energy, the motor. And a travel, Devin Gage fired up. The emotion is back in the building. And right here, this is just pure boot strength. Going to retrieve the ball, securing it with two hands. And then Reed really being active, using his length, his energy. Attacking the glass, creating offensive opportunities on putbacks. As we say, right place, right time. More often than not for Paul Reed, the sophomore from Orlando. Gage looking for space around Howard. An offensive foul. And Devin Gage will get that foul, extended the arm a bit on Marcus Howard. Easy call right there, easy call, push him with that. With having, that uh, should be two fouls on him. Has to go to the bench right now. And he 
use the head of the snake as it is for DePaul. He was so good down the stretch against Xavier. Howard got it poked away from Kane on the floater. Good job by Kane, not giving up on that curve. Transition D, very good, but Struess lays it up and in. Just the second field goal for Struess. I really like how Max Struess is finding his rhythm by not settling for threes, but attacking the basket in transition in half court. Adam to Hauser. Hauser trying to get around Paul Reed. It's a fun matchup to watch. Paul Reed's an excellent defender with his left. Howard driving, and Eli Kane reaching over the top. Defense turning into offense, and Struess not afraid to drive. Well, Struess being very aggressive in transition, which he should be. He's always strong going right. He turned on the boosters and got to the basket. Kane just picked up his second personal foul, so he engaged both with two. Howard hits the first free throw. Kane, with his wingspan and size and the ability to guard Marcus Howard, he presents a big-time problem. You look at what Marcus Howard, when he's had trouble this year, and it's been very rare. It's against guys like St. John's where they've got those big guards that can match up with him. Yeah, you put a big guard on him, a wiry guard, an athletic guard, and now that Kirk causes problems, causes havoc for Marcus Howard. The other thing, if you want to slow Marcus Howard down, you have to tack him on the offensive end. Eluja B, too strong that time, his first miss. The loose ball goes to Sam Hauser. Howard driving up Paul Reed, left hand, Marcus Howard. You want to know why Marcus Howard scores games of 50 and 38 last game? Because he's crafty off the bounce. Left hand, right hand, inside out, and knows how to get in the paint and finish over the big guys. A foul on Howard. Deceptive speed, craftiness, and skill. All of those things combined give Marcus Howard the ability to get to the basket, mid-range pull-up, knock down threes, and play out of ball screens. 13 for Howard. The ability to go off at any moment. Game against Buffalo earlier this year at 45 points, 40 of those in the second half. And left hand bucket, not necessarily a sky hook, maybe like a four o'clock hook. <laughs> Came from down low. <laughs> <laughs> the scoop underneath hook. <laughs> the little man hook. That's right. Howard, step back three. Short. Morrow got taken out from underneath by Elijah And there's a point of emphasis this season on these type of plays. When you're boxing out, a guy has already got airborne, and now you put extra into him when he's in the air. That is a foul. As you see, Ed Morrow just working, but a blue-collar worker getting off as a position. And that's two on Elugibi as well. So you get Elugibi with two, Kane with two, Gage with two. Howard, nice moves on Lyric Schreiner. Open man, Bailey from the corner. Brendan Bailey, and another offensive rebound by Morrow. There's Howard. Couldn't dial it up that time. Marlon just attacking the glass, giving his team second opportunities. And a walk on a load should be good help from Marlon and Hauser. Creates the turnover. It's a five-point lead for Marquette on the road. Lujibi's had a great night so far. Same with Hauser, Hauser, and Howard. Good one. 3.44 to play the first half in Chicago. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Beautiful skyline of Chicago, the Windy City. Five-point lead for 10th-ranked Marquette on the road against DePaul. Trying to follow up what was a huge win over the weekend against Villanova. But the bigs, Dickie, they are in some serious foul trouble. Theo John, Joey Hauser, Ed Morrow, each with two. The Blue Demons have some foul trouble themselves. Well, like you mentioned earlier, we get, we're get we getting a little old-school Big East right here, the battle in the paint, the battle of the bigs. Something that is not common in basketball now because everything's on the perimeter. So it might be a little shock to the officials. <laughs> not a ton of 3 and D in this game today. <laughs> not at all. Sam Hauser down long, Struess 
And Marcus Howard nearly walked with it. Instead, drives. Eight to shoot for Bailey. Bailey around Paul Reed, and Reed blocked it out of bounds. Six on the shot clock for Marquette. You know why Paul Reed is starting? You know why he's playing so well? He has realized he's understands his role, has embraced his role, and he's starting in his role, and that's using his length defensively. Tough shot for Marcus Howard. After making five of their first six, Marquette has missed 10 of their last 11 from beyond the arc. Excellent contest on the jump shot. That's what you have to do. The assistant coach for DePaul, Tim Anderson, going over the scout report early in the game about how focused they had to be on Marcus Howard in the ball screens and his ISO. Eli Kane step back over Bailey. She's strong. There's Paul Reed. Offensive rebound and reset for DePaul. I just can't say enough about Paul Reed's improvement, his development. As you see the turnover there by Shriner, but Paul Reed, you saw the block on one end. He's averaging two blocks a game. He's a very good, energized defender coming up with steals, averages over one steal and a half a game. You see the offensive rebound, giving his team second chance points, and you don't have to run plays for him. He's going to get offensive putbacks, a lob dunk, attacking the basket. Another ton of basketball for Paul Reed growing up in Orlando. Down by fire here in Chicago. He's done a great job. Morrow underneath. Morrow, presence felt off the bench. But Morrow is just going at Jalen Bucks. Isolation, one-on-one, -on -one. nobody's coming to help. Coach Lato and his team are just hoping that Butts can keep Morrow from scoring and Morrow just using strength and skill. Got that dad is a football player, mom was a basketball player. Athletes galore in his family. No doubt that he has thrived. Whether it was in Nebraska for two years prior or here at Marquette this season after sitting out last year with the transfer. And where the game is going right now, guys like Ed Moore, the undersized forward center, guys that can play in a post, get rebounds, switch on defense. It's a premium for those type of guys, Jeff. A little turnover forced by Marquette. That's the ninth for DePaul in the game. And this is where DePaul has gotten better in the past with managing the game, not having these kind of turnovers. They have to get back to that before they close out the half. Go down low, there's Morrow, extra dribble, and he finished! Nice homecoming for Ed Morrow. Coach Rojo is getting maximized minutes out of Ed Morrow right now offensively. And Morrow, after he was so good on the other end, just picked up his third. Theo John in foul trouble, Joey Hauser in foul trouble. Please call in the force of Ed Morrow getting space, getting his strength, and going up and just finishing with the emphatic dunk. He's four for four from the floor. He's going to have to hit the bench in the final 141 with three fouls. The bench didn't do much against Villanova. In fact, only five players scored in that game in the win for Marquette. Only Bailey coming off the bench for four as Matt Helt checks into a nice ovation. Nice to have the depth of a guy like Matt Held, who was a starter last year, for every game but one. He barely plays now, but he has such a great presence on the bench, in the locker room, and on the floor when he's there. You're absolutely right. A guy like Matt Held, who played starter minutes as a starter last season, you're never worried about your guys getting in foul trouble. You know Matt Held is going to come in, do his job, be physical, and be productive. Matt Held was talked about by his head coach yeah, two weeks or so ago. And Seymour Jahowski nearly brought to tears. And another guy who hasn't had a lot of PT lately, Jamal Kane with a three. We're talking about Jamal Kane, who was a major factor of this team last year, playing a lot of minutes, and now has to wait his turn, but stepping up as you see Struis. Struis getting loose for a knockdown three. A great answer from the senior Max Struess. It was the largest lead of the game for Marquette, not anymore. Now Howard, left hand over Schreiner. Marcus Howard has mastered that nice left hand, little running point guard hook, along with the floater, very effective. Schreiner looking for help. 
And a walk by Larry Schreiner. Another turnover there, 10th. Folks, make sure you stick around. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, Kevin Burkhart, Steve Lab, and Casey Jacobson have a preview of Wednesday night's College Hoops triple header on FS1, including Providence, Villanova, and Georgetown Seton Hall, plus a bunch of first half highlights and analysis. It's all coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report. It's an 11 point lead right now for Marquette on the road. And there is a ton going on in the Big East. One other game going on at the moment, but Marquette with a big win against Villanova over the weekend. Just one game back in the standings, but the note that I love the most, Dickie, is the one right in the middle. All of these games in the Big East, 25 of the 55 have been decided by six points or less. Just what you want to see. Yeah, and the NCAA committee has to be careful here. You know, I've heard people talk about how the Big East is playing. The Big East is tough. These teams are tough. When you have a situation with 25 of the 55 games or six points or less, that means that teams are battling competitive. Any one of these Big East teams, when they get in the NCAA tournament, you better be fearful. Marquette can make things happen. Villanova can make things happen. And the DePaul and Georgia and St. John's are rising to the top. St. John's with all the guard play they get from Shamir Pines. Look out. Six to shoot. Howard behind his back. Schreiner in his face. Howard answers the call. There's nothing you can do right there. That was good defense, but better offense by an explosive score. Eli Kane shot out in his first half. Struis able to get a bucket. And that is how the half will end. 51-39 is our score. For Marcus Howard first. There's no defense for that. Isolation one-on-one. -on -one. He's in his comfort zone. And a fun first half. Make sure you stick around. But first, we'll have Kevin Burkhardt, Steve Lavin, and Casey Jacobson in L.A. On the other side of this break, we'll be back in Chicago. 12-point lead, Marquette. Fifty-one thirty-nine, Marquette on the road. Dickey, you had two names you pointed out at the beginning of the ball game as your game changers. Marcus Howard was one, did not disappoint. Marcus Howard didn't disappoint. Eighteen points, being very effective offensively like he does, and Paul Reed didn't disappoint either. Being versatile, using his length, offensive rebounds, four of them, just being productive. Block shot. Billy Hauser starts on the floor with two fouls. There's Howard got fouled in the act. He's going to go to the line and shoot three. And speaking of three, that's Eli Kane's third. That's, a, that's an easy call for the refs. You have to stay attached. Eli Kane coming a little late. He touched his body. He touched his body in the act of shooting a three. You just have to play through it on a high contest. 12 seconds into this second half. Eli Kane with just one point and three fouls. He knew that he was going to have his work cut out for him. Trying to defend Marcus Howard in this ball game. And he's going to go to the bench and Lyric Schreiner's going to check in and try and put the brakes on Howard. Well, you can see Eli Kane's frustration as he goes to the bench. And like you said, it's a tough matchup for him. Not a matchup he can't handle. But you have to have everything go right. You have to be locked in in the gauge. You remember at the beginning of the game, Eli Kane had too much space off of Marcus Howard, allowed him to knock that three down. Builds up frustration, pushing in the three foul situation. A 20 point game as well for Marcus Howard, his 10th of the year, 20 plus. We talked about that before the game, Jeff. We talked about his 20s, his 30s, his 40s. <laughs> God is in 50s. Got a 52, Devin Gage, no, on a foul. And if they get Theo John, that is his third. It is Theo John. Here is Marcus Howard. 25, just over 25 points a game. 17, 20-plus point ball games. That includes the times he goes over 30, over 40, over 50. I mean, just incredible what he's been able to do scoring the basketball. Butts had it blocked by Theo John, and then finally Paul Reed cleaned it up. Again, you can't teach limp. Paul Reed gives you that. He's active, and if he continues to pursue offensive rebounds, he's going to eventually come up and give your team a second chance basket. Perfect feed from John to Marcus Howard as well in the paint. 
The bigs for Marquette are excellent passers. They've been in this system. They know how to read the defense and deliver the ball. 23 now for Marcus. 15-point lead. Strews threw a knuckleball over to Paul Reed. Trying to go around Hauser. Reed. Ran into Theo John. Finally, it's Butts now. Strews and Strews over Sam Hauser. Well, I have to say, Jeff, the Paul got bailed out right there by their marquee player. That was just talent knocking down a three-point shot. They're getting away from what they do. They need ball movement, and everybody's trying to force the issue. There's Joey Hauser. He buries another three. Didn't play a lot in that first half because of foul trouble. Exchanging threes. In that 18 minute mark. Struis on Joey Hauser. Struis drives, ran in the field. John, no call. Struis is down. Finally, Struis able to come up, and Dave Lado. Shot. There was no call. Basketball stays with DePaul. Three seconds on the shot clock. Theo John is going to go to the bench. He just avoided picking up his fourth. And then they'll get Sam Hauser on a hold. Shoes being aggressive again. Pick it up where he left off. It's close. It's close. Theo John going straight up. His first... His verticality seemed to be straight up. His hands were high. That's close. I think that official did a good job by no call. And the foul on Hauser allowed the shot clock to reset. A miss by Struess and Joey Hauser with a rebound. Up ahead, Sakar Annan. Open man, Sam Hauser. Good ball fake. Hauser short on that shot. This is where the ball needs to get the body movement, the ball movement, not try to be ball stoppers. Everybody's being a ball stopper trying to create off the bounce. Trying to get the offense moving a bit and an offensive foul. Go on Devin Gage. That's his third on a bad screen. And Femi Elujubi is going to check in. Elujubi was the spark offensively for the Blue Demons. I beg your pardon, they picked up Reed on the personal. It's just his first. But Elujubi is going to come in. He was great in that first half with 15 off the bench. Good action. Sakar Anna. are working around the screen now. Howard with 10 on the shot clock. Howard drives. Howard, nice floater over Elujubi. One thing you have to understand in the scout report, when the shot clock gets to 10 seconds or less, it's give it to Marcus Howard, let him create out of the ball screen, and you saw right there, effective hesitation dribble, freezes a D, floater for the two. More often than not, he's going to do a good job and finish. A foul underneath, and a thing of beauty with Marcus Howard, this type of shot has come a long way the last couple years. So good in the ball screen action. So crafty off the ball handling. Hesitations, stop and go, full struess, and just a nice floater with the touch. 25 now for Marcus Howard. Joey Hauser just picked up his third personal. The third at Golden Eagle with three fouls. So Jamal Kane is on the floor. Hit a big three in the first half. Struess nearly lost it. Devin Gage drives. Gage with the right hand finished. And that's what you have to do if you're the ball. You have to attack Marcus Howard. The way to slow down the score, he used to always ask me, how do you stop Steph Curry? You don't stop him. You slow him down by attacking him on the offensive end. Making scores have to guard defensively. First points for Devin Gage. Hauser going around the edge. Funny open man, Sakar Annan. Good ball movement paid off. Gage drives. Gage hangs. Hits. Chance for a three-point play for Devin Gage.
It's so good to see Devin Gage back for this season coming off the injury. Look at the strength, the poise, and an animal, an improved shooter, knocking down the three out of the corner. minutes of this one's our up-to-date Big East Conference standings. Marquette just a game back of Villanova to Paul. Even though they're right in the middle of that log jam, they would be the number three seed if the tournament started today. Big East. And St. John's currently out in front of Butler late in the first half in Big East. One of the teams that, uh, as you see the foul trouble here, you see uh, Bill John, Joey Hauser, and then they were counting on Ed Morrow. He has three fouls. But as you see their standings, I would say to you, don't sleep on the Butler Bulldogs. Do not sleep on them. DePaul has a tough matchup with Butler coming up this weekend at Hinkle. Sam Hauser off the mark on his first shot of the second half. 15 point lead for Marquette. Putting on a clinic, shooting the basketball so far tonight. The defense has been terrific as well. They've engaged, trying to facilitate another rebound by Ed Morrow. Marcus Howard beats Sam Hauser. There's Jamal Kane. Good ball fake. Jamal Kane. Slippery. With the foul trouble going on today, Jamal Kane is earning his minutes. Lost in the rotation and finding a way to be productive on the court today. Knock down three and that strong drive to the back. Three in the first half. Now a nice try. Devin Gage fade away. Not his shot. Howard trying to push the tempo. Howard nearly fell down. Into the corner for Anna. Anna was making them all weekend against Villanova hasn't stopped he's made his last 12 shots just playing with a high level of confidence big contingent of Golden Eagles faithful making the track down from Milwaukee watching Marquette up big 19-point lead for Marquette on the road after going one-on-one -on -one last week. Dickie, I love learning from you. That's why we're going to go back to the lab right now in Chicago. I'm going to help you. Professor Dickey taking you back to the lab. Jeff, this will help you at the health club. It's called the one more. You see the penetration, the precision of the passing. The one more pass finds Jamal Kane in the corner. You're making DePaul have to recover. Illusion be rushing out. Jamal Kane using his athleticism. An acrobatic finish at the basket. The one more pass. I know you're selfish when you're at the health club and you don't want to pass to anybody. <laughs> you don't want to pass to anybody. So I would love to tell you that's true. The basketball is like a hot potato in my hand. I can't get it out of my hands fast enough, man. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about one more pass with me. It's, oh, man, you're wide open. There's nobody on your side of the floor. A foul underneath. Hey, you say there's a reason why you're wide open, huh? That's right, and I don't take the shot even when I am wide open. It's perfect. I box out. I know my game. Just trying to, <laughs> hey, just, just trying to give you a little, little skill teaching here. So when you, when you're playing against the doctors and the dentists and guys at the health club, <laughs> you, can, you can get buckets. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good when I'm coaching my four-year-old. Hey, pass the ball. <laughs> it's perfect. I love going back to the lab. Thanks, Dickie. He fell on Max Cruz on the other end of the floor. Ed Morrow on the floor with three fives. Spinning around on a to be. And they'll get a foul on Femi. Marquette has done a nice job of protecting the basketball today. They've only turned the ball over three times. And none in the last 12 minutes. 
as Morrow will go to the line looking to add to his great day off the bench. Eight points, perfect from the floor, four boards, three of them on the offensive end. You'll understand this in this game right now. Ed Morrow stepping up as guys are in foul trouble. A veteran college player using his physicality in the offense, bringing some offensive presence in the paint. And Marquette right now, 30 points in the paint. DePaul only 18, and DePaul's coming off a game where they have 40 points in the paint and that win on the road versus Xavier. So they're getting manhandled in the paint. There's a 40 to 32 advantage in the paint against Xavier for the Blue Demons. Max Cruz trying to come alive a little bit offensively. Paul Reed gets his own rebound. And Reed went up, ran in tomorrow. Nice defense. Out of bounds going to stay with DePaul. Morrow got his hand on it, credit him with a block. He's on the floor with three fouls. He's got to be careful defensively. That was a clinic. He definitely has to be careful defensively. They're going to Paul Reed because he has those fouls. Where Paul Reed has to get better this summer is in the weight room so he can absorb the physicality when he's making moves. Sam Hauser's done a great job defensively as Lyric Schreiner buries his second three of the game. He had two on the season coming in. As DePaul makes this comeback, gives a strong effort to get this game back in order. They're going to need Schreiner to make shots, make plays for teammates. Pull up for Howard. Just can't stop it. So skilled, so nice. The lost art of the mid-range game, he's showing that it's a necessity coming off the ball screen with the pull-up jet. And that'll be a foul on Sakar Adam. Again, Marcus Howard just so skilled in trying to score points for the Golden Eagles. So good off the ball screen. And when you think the game has changed to just shooting threes, he's showing you here, I'm going to take the best available shot, which is his mid-range pull-up free throw line jump shot. Driving Eli Kane still without a bucket in this contest. He's going to go to the free throw line. Eli Kane with just one point. He's taking just four shots. And I know right there, that drive showed a lot of frustration in Eli Kane. And in the combination of the frustration, he wants to take this on his shoulders to help bring the team back offensively. I like the drive. I like how they open up the court to give him the available lane. It's been really interesting watching Eli Kane over the last four years and how his game has evolved. Came on campus with shooting threes. Was the best three-point shooter in the conference as a freshman his freshman year. In the sophomore year, went down just a touch. He was relied upon to be the number one scorer. Strong rebound by Joey Hauser, but a foul on Femi Lujabi. Pushing Joey Hauser out of bounds. Eli Kane last year had to become the point guard. This year he's kind of a third option offensively. It's just a really interesting metamorphosis of his game. The evolution of Eli Kane's game from his freshman year to now, you're absolutely right. Came in as just strictly offensive minded, improved defensively going into his sophomore and junior year, and then having to play the PG last year, increased his ability to make plays for teammates and his point guard awareness making passes. Get an offensive foul now on Marquette. Just the fourth turnover, and it's a big foul, too, because it was on Ed Morrow. It's his fourth personal foul, and there's over 12 minutes to go in this game. There's plenty of time for DePaul to chip away to get back in the game. What they have to do is get quality shots. You're looking at ball screens, finding read in motion, or getting the ball to lose to be in the post and making them put pressure on the defense. Crowd wanted to carry for Eli Kane with Jamal Kane on him. Blocked by Theo John. Kane got it back. One on four. Kane finished his first bucket of the game. And just a knack of being a score, not giving up on the play. But Eli Kane making the game a little bit difficult, trying to manufacture a shot. When Marquette's defense is stagnant and you feel John can make an easy block shot. Blue Demons not going anywhere, trying to cut into this lead. Jamal Kane with 10 on the shot clock. Feeds John on the post. Field working on Femi Lujabi with three fouls. There's Sakai Emma. His first miss since Saturday. Where Schreiner saved for Paul Reed.
Hannon had made 12 in a row before that miss. Schreiner got fouled. And if that's on John, that's number four. And it is. DePaul trying to hang tough here at home. Theo John protecting the rim. Hashtag security. The shot blocking ability of the big fella. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Downtown Chicago. Marquette up 71 to 55. Best shot blocker in the conference. Theo John's been on display tonight, Dickie. Theo John averaging two blocks a game. Rejection row. I don't know, Jeff, if you got the Evite to the block party, but he's just a man inside the paint, showing the strength and the ability to finish around the basket. Five blocks for him tonight. Just a couple of points, a couple of rebounds, and four big fouls. Theo John had six blocks. The last time these two teams met back on the 23rd of January also had a double-double in that game. But he's going to have to watch a lot of this from the bench. And you're looking at Matt Helt, who's going to play the majority of the time down in the low post. And Marl also with four points or four fouls. It's going to be a brutal end for Marquette. But they've got some outside presence. And Helt's going to be asked for a lot of minutes. Well, here's the Blue Demons right now. You need to continue to attack the paint so you can get to the free throw line. You're in the bonus. Marquette's in foul trouble. You need to get the ball to Luigi B. Reed on the block and let them go to work. Good free throw shooting team as well for DePaul, 73%. Sakariana inside. It's tipped away by Devin Gage. Numbers for DePaul. Struce goes right down the middle. Struce at the left hand. No hit with a rebound on the weak side. Very good defense by Devin Gage recovering to block the shot. But you want to come up with a basket on that defense with the offense possession. There's Hauser with a feed from his brother. Backbreaker for Marquette. Big backbreaker. Excellent defense. You don't get the basket in transition. And then Marquette knocks down the three. That is tough. First points this half for Sam Hauser. Spruce, who's been annoyed by Sam's defensive effort today. Aluja B, a couple of steps, ran into Matt Held, and Held is going to pick up his first foul. Look how Marquette gets in the transition. Adam, the nice baseline drive, baseline drift pass, and then the one more like I explained in the back to the lab. You get it to Sam Hauser, and he knocks down the three. Just like they did in the front yard up at Stevens Point. Hauser to Hauser. Hey, I love talking to Mr. Hauser. Always get a chance to talk to him Dave, at the beginning of the game. We love talking to him. A basketball genius, a basketball mind has done an excellent job with these boys, teaching them the skill, the fundamental, and starting them off making sure they are shooters. Appreciating the value of the skill and the art of knocking down shots. Spash, Stevens Point Area Senior High School, just outside of Green Bay. Six state titles between the two brothers. I think you got a little jealous when Mr. Hauser, Dave was talking to me about, he was asking me how I look so fit. He was trying to figure out if I still play basketball. I said, no, I'm just on the treadmill for 45 minutes. <laughs> I think you got a little jealous when you heard that. There's no doubt I was jealous. But that Mr. and your seat. <laughs> well, Mr. Hauser still plays a little basketball, gets out there and plays with the guy. I believe it. Paul Reed corrals the rebound off the miss from the younger brother, Joey. Kane spinning around, couldn't finish. Wanted the foul, and with a rebound going the other way for Marquette. Sam Hauser. Now Joey feeds brother. Clean it back up. Marcus Howard with Devin Gage all over him. Devin Gage harassing Marcus Howard. Howard spinning, two to shoot. Sam Hauser off the front of the rim. Nice job by Devin Gage. He was all over Marcus. Unbelievable job defensively. He ignited that defensive possession with the hustle and the intensity. 
Jalen Butts on that help. And a whistle on help. That's his second personal. Again, they're going to ask Matt Held for a lot of minutes down this stretch. 8.54 to go. That's the 10th team foul, so two free throws coming for the rest of the game for DePaul. Well, what DePaul has to do, they're doing a good job getting to the paint. They're drawing fouls, but they have to capitalize at the free throw line. Well, Jalen Butts is only a 50-some percent free throw shooter, but he knocks down the first one. And then when they attack the basket, they have to either finish or get fouled or both. Those two that you just saw on the bench from Marquette, Theo John and Morrow, both with four fouls, one out of two, running the percentage. And they'll get a foul on Max Struess. On an attempt at an offensive rebound for Struess, his third. And Struess is beg begging for a hook and hold. And, and the officials are not, they're not giving any play on that. And it's a walk on Marcus Howard, Devin Gage, right place, right time. Undercutting the route of Marcus Howard. Look at the value of Devin Gage right now. He is turning the momentum of his game defensively. Bringing his energy, anticipation, causing that turnover right now. First turnover of the game for Marcus Howard. And just the fifth in the game for Marquette. Here, Schreiner, step back jumper. Schreiner buries it. Showing some offense for the first time in a while. Uh, unlikely, unlikely suspect of getting offense from is Schreiner. Again, only averaging one and a half points coming into this game, but being effective offensively. And a foul down low. That's Struess, and that is his fourth with 8.15 to play. Remember Marquette over the weekend against Villanova. In the second half, had a 15-point lead, only to win that game by one point. So don't think that DePaul doesn't have that in their minds. They're down as many as 20 in this game at one point. But now Struess has to go to the bench with four fouls. All in this half, and you send a guy who's one of the best in the conference at shooting free throws in the line. 90% free throw shooting. Uh-oh. The official threw the ball when he wasn't paying attention. Let's see if this throws Sam Hauser off his free throw. 90-plus free throw shooter. Let's see if he can get it back. No problem. Oh, uh, yes. No problem. Number two in the conference in free throw shooting. The, the official tried to, tried to ice him out on that free throw shot. You don't think his brother tried to do that to him in the front yard at some point in life? That's one of those things when you're playing against somebody, you can roll the ball out there in the face. Nice drive by Eli Kane trying to facilitate. Now Kane is down underneath the basket. Kane and Kane. Looks like he came down on his back or his elbow pretty hard. He hit the floor hard and then into the back stand. Take time out. Back in a moment. DePaul trailing by 13 points. A really good sign right there for Eli Kane. Upright. See a new armband on his left arm at the moment. This is why he has that. Senior from Philadelphia came down hard after no foul was called right there. Comes down on that left arm. And he had to be attended to pretty quickly. Philly strong right there. Well, that's... You have to commend the strength coach getting these guys physically strong. He he took a big bump right there, the impact of hitting the floor. But it's good to see that they attended to him, wrapped up his arm, and he's back on the court. Huge defensive presence. Eli Kane with three fouls. He's done a nice job on Marcus Howard today. Big East throwback game. 31 total fouls between the two teams. This is a big stop right here for the car. Joey Hauser drives. Paul Reed on the backside. Swatted it out of bounds. 13 to shoot for Marquette. And blocked by Paul Reed. And mentioned the fouls. Struess on the bench with four. John Amaro each with four. Sam Hauser short. Out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Marquette. 
you're trying to chip into a lead and you're down, like Mark, like DePaul, 13 points down, a chance to still command the lead of this game, get back into this game, you have to come up with every possession. The defensive rebounds, you can't afford to not handle your business defensively right now and secure the defensive possession of the rebound. DePaul, one of the best teams rebounding-wise in the conference. Swinging around, Joey Hauser from the corner. And there's another defensive rebound by Eli Kane. They got the stop that they needed. Now they have to get a good shot. Kane walked with it. Picked up that pivot foot. Didn't think so. That's a big turnover. Oh, it's an easy call. Eli Kane clothing as he came down the court. I think he was locked in and focused that he was only going to go look for his offense. Then when they saw Marquez's defense was already back, shuffled his feet. Easy call for the officials. Ball movement for Marquette in the second half has been very noteworthy. Help comes down on Sam Hauser. Spin around Kane, and Sam Hauser just got a shot to the face. And they'll get Kane, that's his fourth. Hauser slow to get up. And, and that was a frustration foul by Eli Kane. Actually fouled him right there on the first one. And then Kane and fouled him there. Frustration play by Eli Kane. You have to kind of play through that frustration. Your team can't afford for you to have four fouls right now with six, with a little under seven minutes to play. And Sam Hauser going over to the officials and saying, I, I'm supposed to be shooting free throws right now, but I don't know how I'm going to be able to see. The trainer coming over as Sam Hauser got poked what looked like in the eye, with the towel on his eye. and. You say he's a really good free throw shooter, second best in the conference. We'll see what he can do when he's seeing maybe three rims. Well, the first time the official tried to throw him off his free throw game by throwing the ball on wrong. You're right. Let's see where he is right now. Yeah, look at that eye. It's all swollen up now. It makes me think of Rocky. I'm seeing three of them, Nick. Punch the one in the middle, Rock. Oh, how about that? Knocks down the first. <laughs> Hey, this guy right here with the Rocky impression right here. I like it. I didn't even really go full Burgess Meredith either. This... That right there just solidified for me what I already knew about Sam Heisen. One of the best shooters in college basketball. Gloria knocks out two free throws. Box drives. Jalen Box couldn't get it. Sakar Adam off him. It's going to stay with the Blue Demons. Again, DePaul is getting what they need to do to the paint, getting close, high percentage shots, but are not able to capitalize and finish off of them right now. And that makes it difficult to chip into the lead when you can't capitalize on a shot. And Sam Hauser is going to go into the locker room right now and get checked out by the athletic trainer. Brendan Bailey's in for him. Hopefully he is okay. And free throws coming. Sakar Anum just picked up his second. Well, in the first half, we had a more fluent first half game with up and down transition. And now the second half, like you said, has turned into old school Big East, physical, a lot of fouls called, attacking the basket. 19 fouls this half. Still got six and a half minutes to go. <laughs> Dickie, you got to put on the knee braces. Get yourself out there, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to get an arm sleeve on and some leggings on and get, <laughs> get with the fashion of today's basketball and get ready to play. Get my headband going so I can at least look like a player. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joey Hauser driving, had it knocked away by Paul Reed into the hands of Bailey. Off the back of the backboard, out of bounds, it's DePaul's basketball. Trying to cut into this deficit again, and now the officials going to get together, and they're going to say it was deflected off of DePaul. Nice job by the officials getting that one right. <laughs> Official Lamar Simpson trying to make sure they get the shot clock straight. They were going to give them a new 30 seconds, but excellent officiating crew right here on top of it, making sure the shot clock is right. Howard on the curl. 
four to shoot. Howard over Lyric Schreiner. The rainbow! First field goal in over four and a half minutes. Paul Reed trying to get an offensive rebound. There's another one for DePaul. They're 11th in this half and a blocking foul on Joey Hauser. The luxury, I'm sorry, Jeff, the luxury to have a go-to guy as your point guard who can bail you out at any time of the game. Late shot clock, give the ball to Marcus Howard, and he's going to make a play. Like he had Skittles in his pocket. <laughs> That's missed the first. Excellent guy. He, he is by far the best college player I've seen this season in the critical of a shot clock, winding down shot clock, late in game. He comes up with big shots, difficult shot make. Bucks, one out of two. He's a 50% free throw shooter. He's two for four today. Theo John on the floor with his four fouls. Big part of this game, free throw shooting down the stretch. It's been dominated by Marquette. DePaul's got to hit their foul shots if they want to try and come back. Down by 14. Joey Hauser from the wing. And a strong rebound by Struz. He's back on the floor with four fouls. Got to have him. Under five and a half to go. Devin Gage driving. There is a foul. Brendan Bailey picks up the personal. Marcus Howard, he is in the mix for the Player of the Year candidates within the Big East Conference for you, Dickey. How could he not be? I mean, this, this is, this is non-debatable right here. Marcus Howard is clearly the Player of the Year of the Big East. His team is winning, top of the Big East standings. This kid is putting the ball in the basket, a straight bucket getter. A guy who scored in the 50s and the 40s this season beat Villanova the other day with 38 points. An explosive score, a fantastic point guard, and a must-see TV player. He is the player of the year. Every time he takes the floor, you got to watch. Just think about what his points per game would be if he didn't play at all in that Georgetown game. He got into the contest and played just three minutes and didn't score. Knocked him down a peg. Howard, four o'clock hook wouldn't go this time. And Lyric Schreiner was out of bounds and Marquette gets bailed out. Again, those are one of those possessions that make it tough for you. Hopefully you can mentally get through it. You get that stop, you're only down 12. You're going down the court to try to bring it within 10 or nine points. Critical stop right here for DePaul in the critical of the game, under five minutes. Howard drives, hangs. Unbelievable Marcus Howard. He's over 30 again. I'm going to say it one more time, Jeff. Amazing player. Difficult shot taker. Difficult shot maker. And look at the concentration, the focus. What people don't realize is how strong Marcus Howard is in his upper body. Gotten so much stronger in his three years in Milwaukee. Really impressive, Marcus Howard. Gage to Paul Reed. Reed driving. Brennan Bailey poked it away. Get ready. Showtime. The Marquette faithful on their feet. The son of Farrell. After school All-Stars, I don't even know if they know it or not, but they have saved so many lives. After School All-Stars provides free after school programming to some of the most vulnerable communities. We really reach out and make sure that we're offering opportunities that students wouldn't have otherwise. The more you in school and the more things that you learn is going to help you throughout your adult life. Being a part of After School All-Stars is a life changer. How things can change on a dime, Dickie. One possession, you get a stop. 
try and cut it to within 10 points or potentially nine, and then Marquette scores seven unanswered. And the thing is, Jeff, DePaul had an opportunity in the last four possessions to just knuckle up, get through the hump, and come up with a defensive stop and capitalize on off his end, and they didn't do it, and like you said, misses like that, it makes it tough to come back in the game. Theo John with a big rip down of another rebound. And a miss by Devin Gage. You can't afford to have misses like that when you're trying to come back and you're playing against this excellent offensive Marquette team with the explosive, dynamic score in Marcus Howe. Joey Hauser trying to get around Butts fade away, and Butts fouled him. Hauser's going to go to the line, but the Golden Eagles are soaring in Chicago. Three fifty-four to play. Marquette up eighty-five at sixty-eight against the DePaul Blue Demons, trying to sweep the series. Sam Hauser, scary moment about five minutes ago, game time wise, got poked in the eye by Eli Kane, went on to make both free throws, and then was rushed into the locker room. And just moments ago, his dad, Dave Hauser being escorted by Marquette athletic director into the locker room to check on Sam and make sure that he is doing all right. So certainly we will keep you up to date on any news that we get from Sam Hauser as his brother Joey, just a freshman, is going to be at the line. See Sam's number 17 points today after he had just four against Villanova over the weekend. See so Sam Hauser is having an amazing game. Getting back into some of the things offensively. Hopefully, it is not a serious injury with the poke in the eye. Hopefully, he just didn't get any seriously messed up with a scratch in the eye. It's good that his parents are here. His dad is able to go back there and assess the situation. Being told that he is out for the rest of the game with that right eye injury. The blood director just informing the rest of the Hauser family that's here. Struis dials one up from three off the heel, and Marcus Howard and trying to bleed a little clock. Well, you can see right now the Blue Demons had an opportunity to really get it to 10 or under 10. Didn't capitalize, and you can feel the energy in the arena kind of drifting away on their opportunities. Howard knifing around Devin Gage, and he was fouled, and Devin Gage wanted to spike the basketball. Howard has been phenomenal from the opening tip. 32 points for Marcus. And one of the things you don't understand or realize about Marcus Howard, he's an unbelievable scorer from the perimeter. He can attack with the floaters, isolations, one-on-one. -on -one. His ball handling helps him create shots, but he also gets to the free throw line. Already having nine attempts this game, getting ready to go on his tenth attempt. Any guy that can get you ten attempts at the free throw line in a game, that is big for your team. I want to go back and check the stats on how many times he's missed two free throws in a game because he's missed two today and only 16 on the season. And that's in over 175 attempts. He's played the whole way. Marcus Howard, he has not sat on the bench at all today. Bailey trying to sneak through a screen, and he's picked up for a personal foul. Again, Howard has been unreal. It's his eighth 30-point game of the year. 33 points for him. A couple of times at 45. Set a Big East record with 53 against Creighton earlier this season. I mean, 33 is like a whole hum day for Marcus. Well, I don't want... I don't want to take anything away from Marcus Howard's performance. And like I said earlier, he's the clear-cut player of the year in the Big East. But understand this, Marcus Howard is the scoring machine for this Marquette team. But you better realize, if you're a fan, the unsung hero of this team is Sam Hauser, the kid who walked out of here going to get his eye checked. He's my Big East un one of my Big East unsung. He makes this team flow with all the things he does with his versatility, his shooting, his inside and outside presence offensively. Sam Hauser again in the locker room being attended to by the training staff from Marquette. 17 for Sam Hauser. There's his younger brother Joey on Jalen Butts. 
Howard getting her on the screen at the O'Jon. Howard spinning around. Finds Joey Hauser. And an offensive rebound by Theo John. Howard, deep three. Got another one. Unconscious. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Marcus Howard pulling up from way out in the parking lot. Luigi B. And another board by Theo John. I don't think the term heat check applies for Marcus Howard. The ultimate green light. Sakar and ran into Femi Elujabi. Now Struce up ahead to Devin Gage. And a foul on Marcus Howard. Devin Gage is going to go to the line, trying to get a three-point play. But Marcus Howard from the logo. This is how dangerous Marcus Howard is. You can't just, you see Shriner coming to the three-point line? No, Shriner. You almost have to come out to the half court. Shriner stops at the three-point line like that was enough. You haven't seen enough video, Shriner, to know that Marcus Howard can pull up from anywhere. That's like a rock and jock basketball ten-pointer. Yeah, that's like uh, Ice Cube's three-on-three. On three on three. I love they, it. They have the four-point shot. That was the... <laughs> That was a four-point shot right there. <laughs> Thanks to Ice Cube. Ice Cube, we can ready to bring the four-point shot into college basketball. Uh, that would have been good. Steph Curry ask that. Steph is not even making shots from that deep. And to just capitalize off of that, the Ice Cube 303 is on Fox TV. <laughs> <laughs> the double on Howard. And that one slipped out of his hands. It's excusable, I think, Absolutely. at this point of the game. Absolutely. Look at Marquette, what they have down the stretch. Only six Big East games to go as Adam heads to the bench. Nice ovation from the Marquette crowd. They've got Providence. That's a big one coming up. Well, I talked to Coach Rojo at shoot-around, and he talked about how you can't be stuck on the win against Villanova. You see they're going to be on the road. A challenging road trip for the next several games after the next one at home. They have to be able to continue as you see the block. Number six for Theo John. He's got 12 on the year against DePaul. And he's not just blocking balls. He's blocking them like they're ping pong balls. As a deflator. Marquette faithful. Loud here at Lindtrust. Marcus Howard finally on the bench for the first time today. Joey Hauser, no, clean up on Kyle Bailey. 19-point lead for Marquette. Again, this is a game that could have been down to just a single-digit game, but Marquette just took it by storm. Max Drews to drive, no. Theo John with a rebound, and Marquette can clean this one up. Again, a phenomenal game for Marcus Howard. Here today, Marquette flexing their muscles again for win number 21. DePaul had their chances. They didn't capitalize. They're playing against an excellent Marquette team who is top in the country offensively and a veteran team with veteran players and an explosive scorer like Marcus Howard. And that's why they're able to walk away with the win of this game. Howard finished with 36 in this one, 92. 73 the final. The Golden Eagles improved to 21 and 4. For Dickie Simpkins and our entire crew, I'm Jeff Levering saying so long from Chicago.